In this video, we'll take a look at uh, concavity and what's called the second derivative test. Now, in this particular graph here, as x approaches 0 from the left, so as we're coming in this direction, the derivative is positive. I'm going to draw a few tangents along the curve here, so starting around here and then going towards the origin. And so notice that all those tangents are positive. And what happens is that right at the origin here, the tangent line becomes horizontal just at a point, and then it starts to increase again. And I'm going to re represent the uh, steepness of those with uh, some plus signs. So for example, this very first one I drew is quite steep, so I'll put three pluses beside it. And this is just a convention I'm using for this particular lesson. There's no particular mathematical reason between all these different pluses just to represent how steep the uh, tangents are. So f quite steep here, uh, a little bit less uh, positive steepness here, a little bit less to zero, and then starts to increase the same again. So as x passes through zero and starts to increase again, the derivative, the derivative is increasing. So what's changing here is actually the first derivative. Uh, quite a large value, not so large, still positive though. Uh, a little bit smaller, but still positive, zero. And then it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger positive again. So th the first derivative is what's changing. Now, the rate of change of the first derivative is called the second derivative. So f double prime is defined to be the derivative of the first derivative. Now, where the first derivative is getting smaller and the tangent lines are above the curve, the graph is said to be concave down, so it sort of opens down here. Where the first derivative is getting larger, it's increasing here, the graph is said to be concave up. So it's concave up here. Now, the first derivative is increasing. So its rate of change, the second derivative, would be positive. Down here where it's concave down, the first derivative is positive, but it's getting smaller. So the rate of change of the first derivative would be negative. The second derivative would be negative. So where a second derivative is negative, the graph is concave down and has this kind of shape. Where the second derivative is positive, the graph is concave up and has this kind of shape. A lot of people talk about tangents above or below the curve. Where it's concave down, the tangents are above the curve. Where it's concave up, the tangents are below the curve. Now, this particular point right here is a place where concavity changes. It changes from concave down to concave up. So that's called an inflection point. And at that point, the second derivative would be equal to zero, and the second derivative changes sign. So that's an inflection point. Flipping over to the second page, now this is what's called the second derivative test. And it's used to determine where you might have a local maximum point or a local minimum point. Now, if you have a, a curve that has, uh, and this would be a on the x-axis here says f prime of a equals zero so there's a horizontal tangent at that point now if there's a horizontal tangent at that point and the second derivative is negative is less than zero so the tangents are above the curve just like in the previous page then the function is concave down <clears throat> now if you have a place where it's concave down and the first derivative equals zero so you have a horizontal tangent then there would be a local maximum point at this point that would be the point a comma f of a right there if the first derivative is equal to zero at a particular point in the graph, so this is the second graph here, so we've got a horizontal tangent right here, and the second derivative is positive, so the tangent lines are below the curve, the first derivative is getting larger, then there will be a local, so the graph is concave up here, so if you have a place where the graph is concave up, and the first, first derivative equals zero at some point, then there's a local minimum point at that point. And again, this is the uh, x coordinate would be a, so we call that the point a comma f of a. Now, so the, the second derivative test is used to determine through using the first and second derivative where there might be a local minimum point or a local maximum point. If the first derivative is zero and the uh, second derivative is uh, is negative, then there's a max point. If the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is positive, there's a minimum point. That's the second derivative test. Now, just to um, uh, a little bit about the inflection point here, if the 
second derivative is zero and the second derivative changes sign. So both those conditions have to be met in order for you to have an inflection point. It's possible for the second derivative to equal zero, but there not to be an inflection point on the graph. The second derivative also has to change sign from positive to negative or negative to positive. So at that point there'd be an inflection point. So uh, just to recap, concave down uh, and the first derivative is zero we have a local max point. The graph's concave up, and the first derivative is zero, we have a uh, local minimum point. And this is an inflection point here. If the uh, second derivative changes sign, in this case, it's going from negative to positive on this side. And that point there would be the a comma f of a point, the inflection point. In example number one here, we're given this function, we're asked to find all points of inflection where any local maxima and minimum might occur and where the graphs concave up and concave down. So for these, we need both the first and second derivative to do all of this. Of course, you have to take the first derivative before you can get to the second derivative. So there's the function. Uh, using the power rule, the derivative of 4x cubed would be 12x squared. Uh, 3 times 4 is 12, reduce the exponent by 1 to 2. Uh, the, uh, this would be 2 times negative 9 is negative 18, reduce the exponent by 1 to 1. And derivative of negative 12x is negative 12. Derivative of a constant is 0. Now we'll set that equal to 0, and in this, this equation, notice that we can divide a 6 out of all of these terms. And so if we do that, 6 goes into 12x squared 2x squared times, 6 goes into this negative 3x, and 6 divided into negative 12 is negative 2. Now we're, we're going to solve this quadratic equation. You could use the quadratic formula or you could factor. Um, I'm not going to go through the factoring because that's not the point of this lesson, but this will factor into x minus 2 times 2x plus 1. So we set each of these factors to 0. And if you set x minus 2 equal to 0, you would get 2. If you set 2x plus 1 to 0, uh, take the 1 over, and you'd have negative 1 on the right, and then divide out the 2, and you get negative 1 half. So those are the two places where the first derivative equals 0, and there might be local minimums or maximum points. And so I'm going to put those on the number line. Uh, each um, tick here, or mark, is a half. So that would be 0, negative 1 half, that would be a half. 1, 1 and a half, that's 2 right there. So that's the scale on the uh, number line. Now let's take the second derivative. The derivative of 12x squared would be 24x. The derivative of negative 18x would be negative 18. And we'll set that equal to 0 to find out to a start and investigate concavity and where we might have uh, points of inflection. So uh, solving for x here, bring the 18 over. Uh, we would have 24x equals 18. And I'm going to write this on the screen here. So if we're solving this, we would have uh, 24x equals 18. And then we would divide out the 24. Now 6 goes into 18 three times, and 6 goes into 24 four times, so that's where the three quarters comes from. So where x equals three quarters, the second root of a zero, and we may have an inflection point. So a possible point of inflection, POI, point of inflection. So I said this is zero, and sorry, that would be a half, that would be one, so three quarters is right in between those. So I'll put that in the number line. Now, what we're going to do now is look at concavity and use concavity to, well, investigate where it's concave up and concave down, and then from that also figure which of the 2 and negative a half are minimums or maximums. So I'm going to investigate the uh, uh, concavity at 2 and at negative a half. Remember, this is the place where the second derivative is 0, so we have to investigate the second derivative to the right of it and to the left of it. So to the right of it, I'm going to use 2, because 2 is my place where I have my um, possible minimum or maximum point, so I may as well check the concavity there. And I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone, because I'm going to check out concavity and then verify whether this is going to be a max or min. So if we put 2 in place of x in the second derivative, 24 times 2 minus 18 works out to 30. And so we have a 
positive second derivative. And so if the second derivative is positive, then the graph must look like this shape. It has to be concave up. And so at that point, at 2, the graph is concave up. So it has this kind of shape. So at 2, there must be a local minimum point. So concave up here. And so it's concave up where x is greater than 3 quarters. Remember, 3 quarters, the second derivative was 0. And we investigated the second derivative at a number to the right of it. So um, where x is greater than 3 quarters, the graph is concave up. Now we'll check out uh, a number below neg below the 3 quarters. Uh, I'm going to use negative a half because that's where I think I have a, a maximum endpoint. So I'm going to put negative a half into my second derivative. So 24 times negative a half minus 18. Now this would be negative 12 minus 18 works out to negative 30. So the fact that it's uh, less than 0 is what's important here. And so we have a negative second derivative here. So the graph at negative a half must look like this. It's concave down. And so below 3 quarters, x is less than 3 quarters, is concave down. So that's where it's concave up and concave down. So <clears throat> just to find the uh, function values. So at 2, I said the graph would have to be concave up, so there's a local minimum point here. To say what the point is, I really should take the 2 and put it back in the original function, here or here, it doesn't matter. And so 4 times 2 cubed minus 9 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 6 works out to negative 22. So that's the y-coordinate. The point is actually 2 comma negative 22 there. And then I'll do the negative a half as well. I'll put negative a half back in place of x in the original function, and I get 9.25. So a local maxima occurs at negative a half, 9.25. There's a local maximum here. And a local minima would occur here at 2, uh, which is the point 2 comma negative 22. So that answers all of the uh, questions. Oh yes, also the uh, point of inflection, right. Uh, we thought there was a point of inflection possibly at 3 quarters and we showed that concavity changed here. It was concave down on this side, concave up on this side. So putting 3 quarters back in the original function, the y value there is negative 6.375. So that's our point of inflection at 0.75, negative 6.375. So at, that answers all of those questions. Okay, one last example. We're asked in number two here to sketch a graph function with the following characteristics. The second derivative is greater than zero, where x is less than negative one. And the second derivative is less than zero on x is greater than negative one. Now we're given a couple of characteristics. This is a point. Uh, the second derivative is zero at negative two, so we have a horizontal tangent line there. And the sec uh, sorry, the first derivative is zero there, so we have a horizontal tangent line where x is negative two. And also at three point five, we have another horizontal tangent line. So this means if the second derivative is greater than zero on x is less than negative one, the graph is concave up to the left of negative one. So this is where x is negative one here. To the left of that, the graph is concave up. Uh, the second derivative is less than zero where x is greater than negative one. So uh, to the right of where x is negative one, the graph is concave down. So at negative two, Negative 2 is to the left of negative 1. If the graph is concave up there, see, negative 2 is that in that interval where x is less than negative 1. So we have a horizontal tangent where the graph is concave up. So if the graph is concave up, that means there has to be a minimum point at negative 2. And then the 3 and a half, 3.5, is in this interval where x is greater than negative 1 and there's a horizontal tangent line. So there has to be a maximum point where x is 3.5. We're not told what the y coordinate would be, but wherever x is 3.5, there would be a maximum point. There's more than one possible graph to draw here, but we're drawing a graph with these particular characteristics. So f of 0 is 2, so we the only point we know for sure in the graph is this 0, 2 point. And so at um, negative 2, um, let's say the um, x coordinate is 1. Okay? It could be lower than that, for example. OK, 
Okay, uh, that's just a, a possible point that could be in the graph. And then also at three and a half, there's a local maximum. So the uh, at three and a half, uh, I'm going to say let's uh, let's say the y coordinate's four. It could be higher than that or a little bit lower too. And so the graph would look something like this. Remember, below negative one, the graph is concave up. Uh, to the right of negative one, the graph is concave down, and it's supposed to go through this point. At negative two, there's a local minimum point. So this could be lower. I couldn't put it too much higher because um, if I put it much higher, then I wouldn't have uh, uh, I, I, I wouldn't have the concavity being able to change from concave up to concave down. And uh, over here, I could have this point higher or a little bit lower, but of course, it would have to be above this in order for that to be, actually be a maximum point. So uh, the graph would look pretty much like that. We could stretch it vertically a bit, but that graph would have those particular characteristics. And that's the end of the lesson.